everyone, I'm Tai Min Min, and I'm going to share about ARCAP 2021 Aichi Japan. I'm from Raffles Girls School Secondary, Singapore, and I'm 15 years old. For ARCAP 2021 Aichi Japan, I participated in the Coastface Autonomous Driving U19 category. I have done many RoboCup competitions since last year, and this is my third time doing autonomous driving, which is formerly known as Grand Prix. I am also in my school's robotics club and have participated in many other robotics and coding related competitions as well. In summary, the mission is to pass through all waypoints in the shortest amount of time. I investigated which is the shortest path as well as how I can follow the line quickly without compromising accuracy. I used proportional, integral, derivative or PID with compass and staying on that road which helped me pass through all waypoints in 38 seconds. This is the preliminary challenge map. Since there are fixed starts and end points, for the shortest possible path, the first and last waypoints should be close to the start and finish points respectively. The other three waypoints should be close to the previous waypoints. With that, I derived the shortest path highlighted in blue. One of the tasks I encountered was to turn at this junction with no markers, no lines, but a wall. I also needed to pass through dark roads with no line in the middle but with lines at the side and markers to mark the entrance and exit. Lastly, sharp consecutive bends, luckily lines, also need to be navigated through. The overall mission can be solved if these mini tasks are completed. The first algorithm I used is proportional, integral, derivative, or PID. I calculated the error which is the distance between the robot's optimum and current position. I set the optimum position to the middle of the IR sensors L1 and R1. In this case, let the current position of the line be between L1 and L2. The error is negative 0.4 minus 0, which equals to negative 0.4. As such, the robot needs to turn left to correct itself, such that the error is 0. For proportional, I calculated the rate of turning of the robot and its direction. The rate of turning is directly proportional to the magnitude of the error, while the direction of turning depends on the direction of error. A negative error means the robot turns left, while a positive one means the robot turns right. For integral, I calculated the sum of all errors, and this corrects the robot such that the sum of errors is zero as positive errors should cancel the negative ones. Integral helps reduce steady state error, which is the difference between the desired value and when the output has reached a steady state. This is what proportional alone cannot achieve. However, proportional and integral can give high oscillations, thus increasing the possibility of overshoot, so I use derivative which anticipates the next error by taking the current error minus the last error. It reduces oscillations and overshoot, as the robot is less likely to make sharp turns and steer away from or overshoot the line. Proportional, integral and derivative are then added up to give the PID output which is the turning angle. Let's watch a video of PID at work. The second algorithm I used is staying on dark roads, which has no line in the middle. As there are thicker lines either side, I can leverage on them to stay on the road. When the lab moves IR sensor is setting the line, the robot turns right to get back on the road and vice versa. Otherwise, the robots move straight at full speed. For PID, roads with bends require a slower speed as the robot needs more time to correct itself. With the help of the compass which gives the rotation value of the robot in a z-axis, the robot knows when it approaches bends. 
For example, the robot can slow down when rotation Z is 0 after waypoint 1 and before the purple marker, and when rotation Z is not 180 after waypoint 4 and before the dark road. To save time on straight roads, the robot can move at full speed, such as when rotation Z is 90 after waypoint 1 and before the purple marker, and when rotation Z is 180 between waypoints 3 and 4. Furthermore, at this junction, there are no markers nor lines to aid in turning right. However, there is a wall. I can leverage on the ultrasonic sensor to tell the robots when to turn, in this case for distances less than 18. Once any of the IR sensors senses a black line, the robot stops turning and can continue line tracking. There are many errors I encountered, but the robots falling out of the line after turning is the most common one. This could be because after the robot finishes turning, none of the IR sensors are sensing the line. To circumvent this problem, I made the robot turn until the black line is sensed by at least one of the IR sensors, such that PID can continue after the turn. In conclusion, with the implementation of PID with Compass and staying on dark road, the mission is completed in 38 seconds. However, there are still areas for improvement. I chose PID instead of conditional steering as PID accounts for previous errors as well as smoothens out oscillations and prevents overshoots, while conditional steering only relies on the current error, which means there can be underturning or overshoots. In the future, I hope to use PID on dark roads. Currently, I fix the turning rates when the robot detects the sight lines, but this can cause it to turn more than it needs to or turn too little. I will also want to work on improving my PID tuning using methods such as the Ziegler-Nichols method or the thyrus Burn method. From this challenge, I have learned a multitude of things, including strategies such as PID, where I vary the constants to achieve reliability and speed, and using variables which help me change the states of the robot such as whether the robot is line tracking or on a dark road. I have also learned many soft skills such as perseverance. To all aspiring co-space participants out there, or even if you're just watching this for motivation, I hope you'll never give up, even if a task seems impossible. Most essentially, the journey is more important than the destination. Win or lose, it is a learning that counts. Thank you for listening. I hope you have learned a thing or two from this presentation and are motivated to participate in Code Challenges. Goodbye!